So tell me, Charlotte, what was your childhood like? My childhood was, um, I was the third child in the family. I had an older sister, eight years older than me, and a brother six years older than me. We lived on a farm. My father raised, it was a quite big, 320 acres of peaches. Oh, wow. And then he had two other farms, which had prunes and almonds. So I grew up on a ranch. You know, I grew up driving a tractor and a Jeep and a pickup truck. And um, it was it was wonderful. You know, it was a lovely place to be, you know, out in the country. So that's what I did as a kid. And did you, how was, um, like, what did you enjoy doing when you were a kid? Did you have any hobbies or was that? I was a roller skater. Okay. From so the time I was in the third grade, my father took me to the local roller rink bought me a pair of boot skates and that's what I wanted to do. So I took lessons and every day after school, I would go to the roller rink and practice. And then I would be in competitions uh, either for dance or uh, there's figure skating, which was, okay. you have to do a, a, a designated pattern, yeah. you know, follow a pattern. Uh, dance was with a partner. So we had routines. And then freestyle, oh yeah, I like freestyle, do anything I want. I wasn't a very, I wasn't athletic, so I wasn't a very good jumper, you know, so okay. mainly, mainly I was a dancer, you know, a, and I was very good. I was, you know, quite graceful. Um, so that was my childhood. How uh, long did you do the um, roller skating? Oh, I did it uh, when I, till I was in high school. So I did okay. it the time I was, eight until I was 17. Oh, wow. I, yeah, I stayed, I skated, you know, like three days a week after, after school and then competitions. And then um, it wasn't just for fun. It was something that I had, a, I had a competitive streak. Yeah. So it was a way for me to compete and, you know, do something, win something, a medal. <laughs> That's the way I was leaning. You know, I wasn't a very good student. In fact, I couldn't, when all my friends were going to college, I couldn't go because I didn't have the grades. You know, mm -hmm. I was basically a C student, which is passable, but it doesn't get you into college. And to tell you the truth, I don't know what I would have studied if I was went to a regular college. So I went to a theater school and spent my whole life. It's been theater and acting, you know, and then I got, I got into television when I was very early, you know, so that was that it became my career. And okay. until I retired, uh, when I was 65, I retired and okay. moved to a small town in California. I live in Napa, California. Yeah. So but basically it's all I did. Did you do you have a, a memory with your parents that um, there's a conversation you had with them that sticks out to you, something that you remember them saying? <laughs> my, my parents were very supportive of the things I wanted to do. My father used to go with me to all my, my lessons, you know, because he was, a, he was a farmer, but it meant that he got up at five in the morning and, and his day was done at like two. So he was able to pick me up from school and take me to my, my uh, skating lesson. And they were always very supportive, but they were a little worried about what was going to happen, you know, when I got out of high school. Excuse me, let me close this. Sun flashing in my face. And I didn't tell them that I had sent away for an application to the Pasadena Playhouse. Uh -huh. They were worried to death. My sister went to college on a scholarship. My brother went to, uh, you know, uh, College Pacific in Stockton. They didn't know what was going to happen to me. And I know they were worried. And so I saw this advertisement for the Pasadena Playhouse. I sent away for an application. I filled it out, signed my mother's name, and sent it back. And I was accepted. And then I had to tell my parents. And my mother said, where did you get that idea that you wanted to go to theater? And I, I thought it was very like, obvious what I want, you know, what I wanted to do. But she was, she said, well, we'll see about this. And, <laughs> and we drove to Pasadena. And she saw the school, which is 
quite impressive, seven stories high and great teachers and uh, eight theaters and a full schedule. She found out that I would go to school all day, do theater every night and stay in a dormitory. So it was covered, you know, that was, that's what, you know, I was safe. So, you know, basically I've never done anything else. Was there, um, do you have a memory as a child that you're very fond of, like a very fond memory that you have? Oh, gosh. Well, because I was the youngest, um, my brother and sister were already out of the house by the time, you know, I was just getting out of grammar school. So I got a lot of attention. Um, <laughs> I used it well. Um, I don't know that I remember any specific uh, conversations with my parents. I mean, my dad was so supportive um, that that's that's what they that's what they did for me. They they understood finally what it was that I needed to do with my life. Oh, God, such a it's all this hay fever. My nose is itching. Um, no, I don't. I don't. I don't remember. Uh, the things I remember the most are my father, you know, would always take me in his pickup truck to the skating rink. He always drove his pickup truck. And in fact, when I, when I got my first acting job, it was a movie and it, it played in my hometown at the drive-in and my father went every night in his pickup truck to the drive-in movie to see my, to see my movie. I mean, oh, that's just, every night, every night, it, wow. you know, it, it only plays, you know, in a normal drive, it, it only plays like, you know, four or five nights and then it moves on to the next town or something. But yeah, he went, he went every night. Um, I mean, that tells you something about the support that I had. Yeah. You know? well, that's amazing. But, um, you know, as far as school and all of that, I wasn't very good. I mean, I did, I did write a book but it was me telling stories, you know, yeah. about, you know, about growing up on the farm and, you know, my, my pet chicken who used to chase my mother all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I won him at a fair. I won one of those baby chicks at a fair. It grew, grew into be a rooster, huge rooster. And he used to chase my mother. And I, so what? I wish I had more specific, you know, things to tell you about growing up, but Oh, no. You know? No, that's good. That's, I mean, it gives me a great picture, especially with your dad coming to your movie every night. I, I don't know if I know a parent who would do that, actually, <laughs> right now. <laughs> that's really well, I was, I was only, I was 19 when I did the movie, so I'd been away from home for a couple of years. Yeah, but and, uh, it's really sweet. Well, it was a small town. We lived in a farm farm town you know not like it's something that happened to every, to every parent you know if you lived in LA chances are one of your kids would go into television and you know make a living but not in Yuba City you know Yuba City it was pretty pretty rare what do you think has been the best part or what is the most beautiful memory that you have of your life Ooh. oh gosh I used to love to walk in the orchard a lot because we were surrounded with beautiful trees because, you know, we lived in the middle of 320 acres of peach trees. Yeah. And so I, I it was a beautiful place to play as a child. And of course, if, when you have an orchard, you have wildflowers that grow yeah. all the time. So for a little girl, you know, to go, go with her puppy or a dog, you know, Alita was my father's dog, um, out into the orchard. I mean, it was a great way to grow up. You know, I went to Catholic school, which was uniforms and nuns, our teacher, very strict, you know, so that was very regimented. But when I got home, I could do anything I wanted, you know, but we lived way out in the country. So I didn't have a bicycle. I didn't ride a bicycle or anything. So I used to just go out and play in the flowers. I was a dreamer, you know. 
just it figures that I would go where I did, you know. Was your do you think the most beautiful time of your life was when you were a child? Oh, I've had a wonderful life. I've had a grateful life. Um, I mean, it was, it was, I probably didn't think much about it at the time that it was so pleasant and so, you know, so good. I thought about it later, you know, when I, I went away to school and then I started working in Hollywood and to move into Hollywood, which was totally different you know, totally different. Um, and I was in business then. I had to, I had an agent, of course, who negotiated contracts. But, you know, I, I worked all the time. Yeah. You no, know, I, I did. I did over 50 television shows before I even started Little House on the Prairie. I would go yeah. from you know, my three sons to bachelor father to Bonanza to Gunsmoke to, you know, General Hospital to, you know, all my children. I did a soap opera for a while, you know. So my life after my childhood was uh, business, acting, serious. And then what do you think has been the hardest thing about life for you? Oh. Um, losing friends, you know, I'm 82 now yeah. and losing, losing people in your life is very hard. I've lost two husbands, mm. um, who were dear friends, not just husbands, but dear friends. Um, I think, I don't know. I have such a good life. You know, I have, I have a, a I'm married now to Michael, who is creative, and we laugh a lot. And I've, I, you know, I feel very fortunate to have connected again with a loving, talented man, mm -hmm. uh, you know, who loves what he does. He just developed a perfume after the perfume Miss Beetle wore in Little House on the Prairie. It's called Lemon Verbena, made from a weed. So he's been doing that. I'm so proud of him for doing that. I've stayed creative, you know, I'm proud of that. I'm happy, I'm healthy. I recovered from cancer. I had breast cancer, um, which, uh, you know, I haven't had a recurrence of that, but uh, I became uh, very supportive of the local hospital here raising money for their mm -hmm. cancer program. And I was able to do that because of my career, you know, because people recognized me and I was able to go do events and raise money. So that was the other side of my acting it wasn't just being in tv shows and making money it was that i was recognizable and yeah. i could use that in a good way you know so i've tried to do that you know how be, long did you have breast cancer how long ago it was 1991 long time ago you know i recovered i didn't i i had i still had some problems i had to have some more reconstruction uh, recently, I don't know if I don't know if you're interested in this at all, but when you have um, a cancer uh, tumor removed from yeah. a breast, uh, it shrinks over a period of time. It becomes much smaller. So I was completely out of balance. Yeah, so I have my other breast reduced. <laughs> so it was a weird thing to have to. Could you please make my breast smaller? Because <laughs> it didn't. They didn't match. So I had to deal with that. But I'm guessing that was hard. It was, no, it wasn't hard. I mean, there are a lot of women who had a lot harder than me, you know, that have every, you know, their whole breast removed or they don't live. Yeah. You know, I have lost friends to breast cancer. Um, it's not the kind of thing that you know you've got. You have to, you have to do regular mammograms, you know, not go 10 years without having somebody uh, give you a mammogram. Right. And I was just lucky because I was very faithful at having my exams and they caught it early. But uh, yeah, I'm very supportive. I raised money for the local hospital. Um, they put me on their wall. <laughs> Said, wow, I didn't know I raised that much. I just kept selling. I kept selling my bags 
and I would give a percentage of it. Every time I got back from a trip, I would write a check to the hospital for a percentage of what I sold. And hmm. all of a sudden, I had given them so much over the years that they put my name on the wall. <laughs> wow. <laughs> How, and so I know you mentioned you've been married three times. How long four. did you, four? Okay. This is my fourth. So then, and you said two of your husbands passed away? Yeah, my first husband and my third husband. Uh, my second husband and I are still dear friends. Okay. He lives out in Palm Springs. And I went to visit him recently. He remarried, of course, you know, because we were married a long time ago. Yeah. And I was asked to speak at a library because of my book, a library out in the desert. So I drove out there, I flew to, San, uh, to Los Angeles and I drove out to the desert. And Jordan came to my reading and I was so shocked and surprised and so delighted to see him, you know, so we, we've stayed very good friends. And um, so he was, he was number two. Number so two. how did your first and third husband pass away? How did what? How did they pass away your first and third my, husband? My, um, th my third husband had, uh, he was very tall. He's six foot three, and he and he had constant uh, back problems, which turned out to be very severe. Oh, wow. And he became addicted to pain medication, and they tried to put in they 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 inserted something into his system that could just inject him with pain on a constant. It, it was awful. Oh, he wow. actually died. He died of the things they tried to do to save him. Literally, I mean, he he. He became addicted under doctor's direction. Wow. Became addicted to pain medication and he died. He was, uh, we moved, when we moved to uh, Napa from LA, it was because he was in such severe pain all the time. Mm. And uh, he couldn't drive anymore. And so we moved to Napa and we were here four years before he passed away. And then I ran into an old friend. Michael and I have now been married coming on eight years. So. And he's fine. He's healthy. Oh, that's good. <laughs> he's very healthy. <laughs> what about your first husband? Tim Considine, who is, I don't know if you remember him from My Three Sons. He was the oldest son. Uh, we were married back in 1965, uh, divorced in 69, and he just died two years ago. So oh, okay. we stayed friends after the divorce. We stayed friends all these years. He remarried, I remarried, you know. Every time I would go to LA, I'd go see them, go visit him. So he stayed, he stayed very good friends. And then he passed away of a heart attack just two years ago. So what does life mean to you? What do you think, oh. what is the meaning of life for you? <sighs> Living well, and that doesn't mean money. Living well means healthy. Um, I walk every day. I love walking in my neighborhood. I go say hello to everybody I pass. They know me now. I'm doing it for what, three, th my walking I've been doing for three years because my health is a, very important to me because yeah. I'm 82 and I want to stay healthy. So I walk, uh, I walk the neighborhood every day. Uh, what does life mean to me? Well, it means giving. I like to be giving to my friends that means of my friendship and my love I just wrote a letter this morning to a dear dear friend who just moved to Ireland and I miss her so much and I wrote to her because I wanted to let her know how much I missed her um, it's hard and you lose your friends when you get older yeah and that's the hard part um, so I try to stay I I want to be productive I want to be uh I want to give back to the world that's given so much to me. Um, I don't know how else to explain that. Maybe that's why I, I sew every day and that gives me joy to be creative. I like to be creative every day. Mm. Uh, I couldn't just sit and watch television or, I mean, reading is fine, but I have to do I want somebody 
want somebody to look at this and go, you made that? Yeah, I made that. <laughs> so I like to be creative and giving. That's, I guess, my life. Creative, creativity and giving. Is there something you would like to see changed about the world? Oh, God, yes. I just, just so terrible, the things that are happening, and, you know, with the wars that are still going on. I don't understand. I don't, I'm not a political person. I don't understand why some of the wars are as horrible as they are. Uh, it just, it just breaks my heart to see things like that. Um, I don't know how it, how it could change. I don't. I'm, I'm not one of those people that could run the world. I just want to say, okay, be nice, everybody. <laughs> it's not the way it works. You know, and I know that our people in government are trying very hard to make the world better. And, you know, but there's some just awful people mm. that take our time, just steal our time with their awful doings. And I, I, I don't know what to say about that. I don't vote for them, for one. Yeah. The bad guys. What I consider bad, you may not consider bad. But right. um, I try to vote for my beliefs mm -hmm. because that's my, the right I was given. Right, yeah. Um, and I absolutely do that every time I get a chance. Um, I support the school systems here in Napa. I make donations, uh, you know, whenever I can make sure my name is on something that, you know, when they're saying, can you help? Okay, I'm here. That's what I'm, that's what I'm here for. That's why I'm alive and well. And I'm still, I'm still making money because this is why I work every day. You know, I work every day. I, I send Miss Beetle all over the place. And, and I use that money well. I don't yeah. use, I'm, I don't live in a big house. I live in a little cottage in back of a big house. <laughs> is there um, is there something you want to do that you haven't done yet? Oh gosh, you know I don't think so. I I don't know. I'm not a sports person. I've never I've never been one to you know to run and you know play soccer. Well, I did play soccer. At one point, I was right forward on my husband's soccer team, um, and that was that was several years after we divorced. And he said, "You want to go play soccer?" And I became, you know, I did that. But no, I I I have a busy life. I try to stay healthy. I eat well. Um, my husband does all the cooking. Oh wow! Lucky lady. I, I do all the dishes. He does the cooking. I don't know how I ran into that. <laughs> That was a gift. That is. <laughs> but he's a good cook. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a very good cook. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we were just talking about that this morning. We, we discuss what to have for dinner every day. And then he cooks it. Does he just make it on the spot or does he look at a recipe? Never looks at a recipe. Oh, wow. Yeah. He just comes up with, you know, the idea. Um one of his, his favorite thing to cook is, you know, steak and potatoes and a vegetable. Uh, you know, we have that a couple of times a week. But, um, you know, he's, he's a steady, not real inventive, but he loves experimenting. I, I see him in the kitchen. He's got stuff all over the sink, all over the drive. Dresses. He's chopping this, chopping that. You know, anyway, I'm just very lucky that he likes to do what he does. <laughs> Is there an individual that you look up to? Pardon? Well, I was going to say, is there an individual you look up to? Oh, my gosh. My family. Um, I, I've lost both my sister and my brother. So I'm the oldest one of the family now. Mm. Uh, so I, you know, I admired them so much. They were such good people. My sister was wonderful. She had seven children. Oh, wow. My brother had three. I'm very close to all of their children who are now in their 60s themselves, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, we, we see each other um, every Sunday. We have a Zoom family, um, family Zoom meeting. So I get to see everybody once, uh, once a month, the, the first, first Sunday of the month. Um, so we keep in, keep in touch. 
and I'm very proud of all of them. They're just, you know, musicians and farm workers and mm -hmm. doctors. I have two doctors in the family. One's a veterinarian and one's a medical doctor. And um, I'm just proud of them all. And we're very close. We just lost, uh, just lost my, my niece's husband just passed away. So we all pulled together for Paolo. He, he was diagnosed with cancer and within five weeks he was gone. Oh, wow. And I mean, it happened really fast and we all pulled together. We were there uh, because, you know, the, the, they didn't have any children. Mm -hmm. And so we just all took turns taking care of Paolo. And, you know, it just happened so fast. And then after he passed, we had a big memorial party. I mean, really wonderful, you know, dancing and music and um, his art. He was an artist. He was a sculptor. So, oh, wow. uh, yeah, we had his art all over the, it was just beautiful. Um, it, it was a lovely, happy gathering, even though, you know, we miss him terribly. But, um, yeah, we all took turns taking care of him till the end. And uh, because he was much younger than us, my niece's husband, uh, it was just really hard. You know, you don't want to lose someone younger. Yeah. When they're older, you understand their time has come. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can, you know, you kind of, there's that understanding. But when they're younger, it's terrible. You know, it's just, uh, it's, it's very sad. But we all, we were all there. We all pulled together. And I'm very proud of that. Are you, yeah. how do you feel about dying? Like, do you feel ready? I'm going to die. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. I, am. I but just, do you, do you feel I ready gotta... about that? Or is that scary to you? No. No, it's not scary. I try to take care of myself. I'm in very good health. Um, like I said, I'm 82. And I think I have a good, you know, 20 years left in me, I think. But if I make it to 100, I'll be very lucky. But um, I'm active. You know, like I say, I walk a mile every morning. The first thing I do in the morning, you know, get my shoes on and head out the door. I've got my earpieces in so I can listen to last night's, um, you know, whatever show was on. You know, I listen to Rachel Maddow and, you know, all the MSNBC guys listen to that, you know, as I go on my walk. So I keep up to date, keep up to date with what's, what's going on in the world. I vote, you know, I take care of, you know, that part of my responsibility. Um, and I work every day. That's life. So you just, there's no fear about dying. No. Not at all. I'm going to die. Oh, you know? yeah. I'm going to die. I hope I'm not in a lot of pain, but if I am, we'll deal with it. Um, I, there's, you know, I, I have regular checkups, so it's not like I anticipate anything, you know, oh, yeah. happening like that. Uh, I don't have weakness in my body, but I did have cancer, but it's all gone. If I get it again or something like that, I will deal with it. I yeah. watched my, my late husband deal with it as best he could. And um, yeah, it's going to come. I can't avoid it. But I'm not afraid of it at all. It's life. Yeah. Sort of. Do you um, do you have a favorite book that you enjoy reading? Um, oh, I, I like to read mystery novels, murder mystery, mm -hmm. detective stories, that kind of thing. Um, and I, I like to, I like to watch, um, copies of some of my favorite TV shows, uh, Grey's Anatomy right now is one of my favorites. So I've gone back to the very short first show. Oh, so wow. I'm watching them, I'm watching it one episode at a time on my little pad, you know? Um, yeah. And then my murder mysteries, there's not a, I don't have a favorite, favorite book. Okay. But, you know, I did, um, I just got this. Red tail feathers. I don't know if you can see that. In oh front yeah, I see it. Yeah, that's um, Wendy Lou Lee, who plays Baby Grace in our show in Little House on the Prairie. She's she's the baby, and she has, this is her second book, and it's full of grace. I mean, it is just. In fact, it's called Dare to Discover the Beauty of Grace, and I think you know she opened my eyes to a lot of that to in in the stories that she tells about herself and her family mm. about 
finding grace in the most amazing places. Sometimes, sometimes we're looking right at it. We don't even see it, you know, to be available, to be aware that grace is all around us. It's in the people we know, our friends, it's in our garden. Yeah. Or maybe it's in a disaster that we, there's nothing we can do about it. And we find some kind of grace of a, a child who was saved or, you know, a country that was saved or, mm. you know, something like that. There's grace everywhere. She calls it red tail feathers because she was sitting in her car with her husband. They were in a fight and they were sitting in the front seat and she started looking out the front window, you know, staring out and there, there's a tree. And all of a sudden she looked and she said, there was a red tail feather that they wouldn't have seen if they had just kept fighting. They just kept fighting instead of looking at the tree and they found this red tail feather. Oh, wow. And that's what she based her book on. That's a good title. <laughs> it's great. And the book is really good too. Yeah, I love her. We stay together when we're on the road. You know, she played Baby Grace and I was Miss Beetle. So we were nowhere near in age, you know. Yes. But we always insist that we share a room when we're on the road because it's just so much fun. We share makeup and hair treats and do I look good and no fix your collar and, you know, don't wear those earrings. And <laughs> we're girls, we're just girls, you know. Do you have a favorite time period in history? Hmm. I think I would have liked to have been born back in the 1800s. Okay. Um, I used to love stories of my grandmother because she came to California as a child in a covered wagon. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. She came in a covered wagon and they settled in uh, Sacramento. And then her uh, son, my father, um, moved to Yuba City and that's where he established our farm and you know, he took took care of his mother until she passed. And and that's where I grew up on the farm. And um, I don't know if I would like to live on a farm again, but um, I'm glad I did, you know, when I did, because my um, my formative years were all on a farm, you know, so I could go out and pick a peach off the tree and eat it. You know, that's rare. Yeah. That is very rare. I don't know where you live. Where you? Where do you live? I live in, uh, it's like Percival, Virginia. So it's. Oh, okay. you're in Virginia. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And are there lots of trees around you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We live more in the countryside of Virginia. Oh, great. Yeah. That will. Me too. I lived in the country in Yuba City. I went back there recently to um, have lunch with some girlfriends that I went to high school with. I got so lost because it's not a farm. It's not a farm town anymore. It's not country anymore. It's, it, you know, 12 stoplights every, on every, I, yeah. I got lost. I did. I couldn't find anything. So it was, I, I'm just so, so happy that I grew up the way I did, you know, on a dirt road, you know, with farm, with my grandmother next door, you know, I could walk to my grandmother's house. And my doctor was at the next house, our family doctor, could walk to the doctor's house. And his daughter was my best friend. Wow. Um, you know, it was a small town. So for so you would like to live in Little House Days? I think I would. I mean, I know it, it would be difficult oh, yeah. with everything they had to deal with. Um, but I, I think I would like to have experienced that. In a way, I did be on, being on a farm. Yeah. Um, and I'm uh, ever forever grateful for that. Um, yeah. Is there an element of nature that you really like? Oh gosh, birds. I have a dove that lives on the roof of the house next door. And he says good morning to me every day. I, when I go out for my walk, he's sitting there. I, I don't know if he, under, he doesn't understand, but I like, I'd like to see that bird every day. And I know you're going to think this is really crazy. But when I go on my walk, and I'm in town. I mean, I, the, the, the country part of Napa is a couple of blocks down the road. But I'm on a sidewalk. And I hate it that people step on snails. I hate that. 
So I go on my walk and I rescue snails that are trying to get across the sidewalk. Oh, I would and do that too. I go pick them up, and I go, okay, fine. you know, and I go over and I put them on the grass. You know, I'm sure they'll go out on the sidewalk and somebody's going to go bam and step on them again. But it just, I hate that. So on my walk, I rescue snails and I pet every dog I see, every dog, know, you know, because I go every day and I see the same people. So their dogs know me now. And they come, oh. Charlotte, it's Charlotte. <laughs> they come up and I, scratch, scratch, scratch. I know my dog is here somewhere. Shana, are you here? Well, if I see her, I'll, I'll clear up. I've got a, um, she just, just turning 18. No, she's just turning 15. Oh, she's wow. A Maltese, a little white Maltese. Shana, where are you? Huh? Oh, well. She's probably, so she's probably tired. She's an older dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's a, she's the focus of our day. You know, what's Shana doing now? She takes us for walks in the neighborhood, off leash, never on a leash. She just knows where she wants us to go. So, I have one of my best friends. And then I just have one last question because I appreciate your time. Um, is there a piece of music that you think describes your personality? Whoa. Gosh, I'm not very good about music. I'm not very good. Um, no, I, I, and I don't remember very well. Um, I don't play it that much and neither does my husband. We're kind of quiet. Mm. Some, sometimes when I'm sewing, I'll put on a, you know, a, a, a CD, listen to somebody, but it, it, not really, not usually. And I don't really play the radio either. I kind of like quiet. I yeah. like quiet time. Is there like an animal then that you think your personality is like? An animal that's my personality. Something that's very active. <laughs> I think I'm a puppy. I'm, I'm some kind of puppy, you know, that looks, that, you know, those puppies that like everything, yeah. whatever it is you're doing, they want it. <laughs> I think that's me. That's awesome, though. It's so good to see that you really enjoy life and are active, even though you're older. That's really yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, check in with me in a couple of years and we'll see if I still feel the same way. <laughs> no, I think I will. I think I will. I'm, I'm happy and I'm healthy and I'm creative and I do that every day. Um, and I pray. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't pray like that. I have a little communication with the higher power, you know, and I do that on a daily basis. I have to, especially at night when I'm going to bed, I think. Um, and I don't say God. I say, hey, you, thank you for my wonderful day. I'll try to be better tomorrow. I won't complain as much, but thank you for what I have. I'm very grateful. I'm a grateful person. And you say, I'm just to ask as a follow up, I know you say, you don't say God. Is there a reason? Or are you it's just. Too, I was raised Catholic and it's too. God. No, I know Careful. that there's a spirit, there's a spiritual, you know, hierarchy there, but I just don't feel comfortable saying God. I know it's bigger than me, but I don't like it so planned and you know it's used too much it's used for bad things and i don't i don't like that mm. i like a you know a loving spiritual power that you know i just i don't know why i used to say god but kind of got rid of it it's a, it's the same spiritual power but i don't like that authoritative condemnation condemnation Mm, okay. I think that was beat into me in Catholic school. Ah, uh, yeah, I can understand that. Yeah. I'm spiritual. 